Hi guys, welcome to the Chelsea Skidmore Show. I'm here with Adam and Patrick of Wyco Vintage. What's up? What's up? Going? Good, good. I am so glad to have you guys on. I'm wearing, by the way, I'm wearing my poison shirt that I got. Uh, God, when were we there? I want to say December. Uh, it was fall or winter for sure. Yeah, I love your store. It's so fucking cool. We, so uh, me and my husband, we were featuring uh, for Josh Wolf in Kansas City. And he was like laying out what we were going to be doing for the day and throwing out like a couple options. And he was like, do you guys want to do like axe throwing or go to like a vintage store? And I was like, vintage store? Even though <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like obviously like axe throwing is really cool. But like to me, like to go to like a cool vintage t-shirt store, like... I, I, everyone always says that when you travel, you find so many better, like, quality vintage shirts, like, in all in random places, like, throughout the country, because, like, I live in LA, and I feel like everything is just, like, picked through, or even fake, maybe, and so I feel like that's, like, one of the special things about your store, like, that it's, like, legit and good quality and cool shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, yeah, that's what we try to specialize in. <laughs> we, we've, we've taken great lengths, I mean, to, to have a quality product. We, we try to avoid holes. We try to avoid stains. We definitely, you know, avoid counterfeits and, and modern reproductions of old shirts. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a job in and of itself at times is monitoring what, what comes in and what goes out and, and making sure it's legitimate. Yeah, I mean, let, we could just jump right into that because that's like definitely a question that I have and that I'm sure a lot of listeners have. Like when you leaf through stuff at like a flea market and you see like a rack of vintage shirts, like sometimes I feel like, and I'm like, for some reason, I'm a person who just has trust issues and I just can't trust <laughs> that like, I don't know if it's like, you know, past trauma that goes into this or like just for some reason I'm like I can't tell if this is a recreation or like a legit shirt because I feel like people just take um I feel like people will like buy a bunch of like worn in vintage shirts and then like screen print on top like what are like the yeah yeah they'll get dead stock shirts and do that as well they'll just get old stock vintage t-shirts and print on them especially really simple graphics and there's you know a lot of people have been exposed for doing that over the years really yeah <laughs> where is there like in what way like just on the internet? um back like, on ebay um in like 2000 and i don't know it's probably like 2009 or so 2010 there was a seller rainbow gasoline who got thrown <laughs> off and he was printing like really simple screen stars on screen stars t-shirt which everybody knows the screen stars tag it's a very common vintage uh tag that you see on shirts and people really like the screen stars tag and he was printing like run dmc t-shirts that are a real simple like white font with a red stripe so it's not like some complicated graphic to steal and um over time he ended up getting reported enough they ended up throwing them off the platform uh you'll see that person you know on other platforms today but wow I don't, wouldn't, I don't wouldn't, go <laughs> google them yeah don't, don't <laughs> google them vintage.com yeah i love your site but really wait so then what are some like telltale signs of things to look for to know that like you're getting a legit vintage shirt or like what are some of the things that people do to like mimic and well, one of, one of the things to look for is like, if somebody has like one t-shirt, that automatically seems maybe a little sketch unless they have a, you know, cause like a lot of times when we buy shirts, we're buying collections from people. We buy from people who went to the shows, uh, people who were A&R reps, they were crew members, they work security at the show and every night, whatever show they were at, they would just get a free shirt handed to them for whatever show it was, almost always extra larges, it seemed like, because when you get these lots, these people would be like, yeah, I was like, you know, I'm five foot six, and I, they always gave me extra large, you know, like just, that's I love what that you just you. did your like roadie voice. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, no, I, I mean, just these people that you talk to, it's, it's really funny, because, you know, there's so many stories behind the shirts, and, you know, some of those shirts, 
that you get from people that did security, they might be for those people only that work security that night. There could have been a different shirt for people who were uh, working concessions, you know, and so there's a, um, you know, there's a lot of different elements to, to people's collections when you buy them. But when you're buying single shirts, you need to kind of look back at, okay, what other shirts have I seen that are like this shirt? Um, is the tag consistent with other ones I've seen? Is the print consistent? Does it have that vintage smell? Does it have that vintage feel? Um, you know, those are some things to, that you can start with, but like in a lot of instances, like I said, when we buy a whole collection, it's like, you know, somebody can't really fake that because in their whole collection, there's a, a big variety of shirts that are maybe worth a lot and not that much that might be torn up. And so you get an idea of what's real by talking to people who actually own them, the firsthand owners. When you get into thrift stores and stuff like that, um, you know, the thrift store isn't responsible for pulling any kind of uh, copyright infringement type pieces. So anything that might be fake counterfeit, they don't care. They're just putting it out because they're selling that clothing for a specific reason. And it's not for, you know, some guy to flip it on, uh, you know, an online sales market and, you know, make a profit off of. And, uh, and so that's why when you're like going to the thrift store, you know, and you might come across a shirt that might seem like it's legit and, and a thrift store is probably worth it to buy it because it's probably cheap right but at least there's these like resellers that kind of play dumb almost like they have this stock that looks rip, really good. i ripped the tag out and, and i don't know what year it's from but it looks old yeah yeah i do know. see a lot of that and there's a lot of there's there's like a there's almost a pattern to it you know it's always like a white shirt with a black print, like very simple stuff because, you know, any shirt that like the shirt you're wearing, it's at least three color print, you know, somebody that's going through the hassle to, to try to recreate that has to put a little more effort in it. That shirt would take a little more effort than just, you know, like a run DMC shirt or a shirt that just says poison in the font and white on a black shirt. Right. And so, you know, but not to say those shirts don't exist that are vintage that look simplistic like that. There's a lot of parking lot bootleg style t-shirts and, you know, stuff like that, that kind of muddies the waters a little bit for people who might not uh, maybe be as, you know, well versed on the stuff that's out there, you know. And I know that you um, separate like on your website shirts by era and like, I feel like isn't it true, like the quality of the shirt sometimes, like how soft it is, kind of differs throughout the eras. Like I feel like, and I might be completely wrong, but I feel like 90 shirts are like so boxy and like stiffer and like, it seems, it, is there like a, like did they differ in that way? And am I wrong about that? I mean, they definitely, they definitely go, going into the 90s, they definitely, you know, uh, it, it was kind of a race to the bottom. Um, you stopped seeing 50-50 shirts. It's a lot more 100% cotton. Um, and, and a lot of the shirts that were made in the 90s have a tendency to shrink upward. They, 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 they would shrink straight up. They would stay the same width and just get shorter and shorter and shorter. Um, so you'll see shirts that measure, you know, 23 inches by 24 inches. Um, that only a, a Lego person could wear, essentially. Very boxy, uh -huh. very boxy. Yeah, I know, because some of, like, 90s music is my, like, alternative rock is my favorite, and I feel like sometimes I'll look for, like, a cool shirt, but, like, it still doesn't feel old enough yet, you know, and then it kind of just feels like I'm just wearing, like, a boxy Marilyn Manson shirt. And, you know, like, I guess for, like, the idea of, like, that vintage fitting shirt and stuff, like, the 90 shirts really don't fit that description in the same way that when, you know, the stuff from the 70s and 80s started becoming popular and you started seeing those kinds of shirts being repopped. Um, th there's a different type of feel to those shirts, which is more of a soft than, you know, like in, in the 50-50 shirts, like Adam mentioned, they just have a different a different wear to them and the, how comfortable they are. It's, it's a lot of what you see now in modern shirts and a lot of the American apparel style shirts where they're really super soft and they're kind of clingy and they kind of, you know, they have that vintage feel to them because they're just like really thin shirts. They still make shirts, you know, like they made in the 90s. I think people just don't prefer that right now. Yeah, I mean, unless it's a 90s shirt, because it does, like you said, like with any kind of alternative grunge style, uh, you know, the oversized look made sense for those shirts. You know, if you saw like yeah. a, a really small skin tight Nirvana shirt just doesn't like look the same, right? You know, it's, yeah, it's a different look. Yeah, that's not look. cool. 
yeah but see, a Led so, Zeppelin shirt would be the opposite you know like you would yeah you know, is it, and is it like how do you deal with the pricing like how do you guys it, it's almost like pricing art like how does someone how does a gallery price art like how do you guys is it like uh you do like comps with like other like sites that you guys kind of look at or is it how old it is exclusive like walk us through how you would price something Right. It's gonna go. It's gonna go everything from like how old the shirt is, what's on the shirt, what condition the shirt is, uh, the size of the shirt, the shape of the shirt. Um, you know, and if then, the shirt's and, been reprinted, because you know, there's certain shirts that kind of lose their, you know, like the Nirvana smiley face shirt that yeah. it's just been repopped so much. It's still a cool shirt. The back print, I think, is really what people enjoy and a lot of the reproductions don't have but you know some shirts like that they're they're just not as desirable um as the stuff that's less printed and you know sometimes like bootleg t-shirts um like parking lot style t-shirts those can be worth more than the regular tour shirt because the art the colors whatever it may be people like it better than what was at the table, you know, for the show. And so, cause sometimes tour some, wacky, some wacky dude's idea rather than like a corporate A and R rep, like coming up with here's, here's your shirt with your album art or your fucking picture on it. And that's what we're sending out. It's some crazy dude on LSD in the parking lot printing shirts in his garage, you know? And sometimes oh, they're tied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought about that. I never thought about how, whenever I saw people selling shirts, like outside of a venue, I always assumed, somehow they like went in and bought like a chunk of them and then came out and was like making money. I never thought about how they probably print them. Oh, that's a, oh. Yeah, those they're bootlegs, and so that's why those guys like. I mean, I remember uh, when I went and saw GNR a couple of years ago, and the guys leaving Dodger Stadium were just pulling shirts out of their 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 jeans. I mean, their jeans were so stuffed with t-shirts, it looked like a magician just like pulling you know <laughs> yeah. shirts out. Um, and so like that's a thing till this day, and even even today, the 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 bootleg shirts are a lot of times cooler, uh, just because whoever did the art, you know, kind of had a. Uh, their they're own fan. They're, they're a fan. fan what, what, and they had their doing. own artistic liberty. They weren't like put into a bubble and told they have to do it, you know, a on certain brand. way. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that's been going on though since, I mean, the Grateful Dead really is kind of where that started. Um, you know, a lot of their shirts that you see were fan made shirts. I mean, they had some licensed stuff, but for the most part, uh, it's a lot of fan made stuff. Mm. Yeah, I remember seeing like a $700 purple print shirt and I was like, whoa, like, I was like, it's so interesting just like the spectrum of like pricing that you guys have and like everything looks cool. Like everything is still cool, but I guess it's just like, I'm assuming there aren't that many of that shirt. There's not that. as much and there's just levels to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> for example, the print shirt you're speaking about, the, the uh, Dove's Purple Rain. Uh, I, I think that's like a lavender yeah, one. Yeah. Those are really hard to find an extra large. Um, and that's another thing when Adam was saying is on sizing, it can be really hard to find those larger sizes. And, you know, I'm a taller guy, so it's like harder in general to find 70s and 80 shirts. Uh, 90 shirts are easy for me because they're all huge. You know, I could fit all of them. Anybody can fit 90 shirts, right? <laughs> but like when it gets to 70s and 80s stuff, you really – uh you know somebody if you're taller or bigger it's it's just next to impossible to find really really cool stuff and so when you do the value on it is you know you just think how many people would you know there are that are bigger that you know would want it and you know that really puts a a, a demand or price it, it just makes it that much more valuable yeah um i have a thousand questions like running through my head but the way my brain works i have to just like move back to the beginning and like let's just start like you know chronologically kind of how you guys grew your company um how did it start how did you realize you wanted to do it and just kind of take me through your journey from like Fantastic. where you were right. and where you are today i was uh i was Basically, I just started looking. I was working a corporate job. I was on uh, a sales job where it was, you know, uh, at a desk all day in front of a computer. And I started looking up vintage shirts. I don't, I can't remember what really like made me do it, but I started looking up vintage shirts, stuff that I used to have when I was a kid, stuff that I wanted. Um, TNC Surf, uh, TNC Surf Company was a really big thing when I was a little kid, and that was 
they had really cool shirts. So I'd look them up and, you know, see if I could find one. I was like looking up like rush shirts and stuff while I was at work. And I just like made this little scribble list of all these shirts that I would see when I was looking for the ones I wanted, like, damn, that graphic's really cool. This graphic's really cool. These things I didn't know existed. So I just, you know, years go by, I'm like doing that every day, basically instead of the work I'm supposed to be at my job. And, you know, I just realized uh, in the process of collecting that I can buy, resell to, you know, spend a little more than I might be comfortable with under other circumstances. Because when I first started buying vintage shirts, $80 $80 was probably like the most I would spend on a used t-shirt because the idea was still kind of new. Um, you know, today I'll spend, I mean, it depends what shirt it is. I, I actually lost on a, a, a bid for a sweatshirt recently. Uh, that was $20,000 of vintage. Oh my God. Sweatshirt. Yeah. Um, so if it's the right piece, you know, you, you might pay a lot for it. Um, but the, uh, the, the kind of hunt that, came about though of looking for stuff because it's hard for me to find stuff that fit me it just like you know it became kind of an obsession and then it just slowly turned into a business because of the the amount of transactions the the inventory started growing and um you know this all started on ebay that's where we started out at um and then you know in 2000 2012 i quit my day job um and started doing it full time and then I think it was what, 2015 when we started the website, 2016, um, because we had just done it through eBay, but eBay got progressively worse the way they treated sellers and stuff and what they, they kind of uh, allow on their site. And uh, it just- eBay is a horrible cesspool of counterfeits that profits off intellectual property theft every single day and refuses to do anything about it. It's a true story. Wow. <laughs> and, and so, you know, like I realized though quickly that I was really working for eBay, even though we're selling stuff and, and you know, making money and profit as a business. Um, you know, the idea of kind of having all the eggs in that basket without a website. And, you know, back when we started, it didn't seem real to have a website because eBay was the only marketplace. There wasn't Etsy. There wasn't Poshmark, Mercari, all these other sites that exist now that, and they just keep popping up every day, you know, Facebook marketplace, you know, people, I, I can only imagine how much stuff gets sold through there now, but you know, eBay was the best back in the day and it was awesome for us. It helped us grow our business quick, but then once it, like they changed their rules and stuff, we, we quickly realized that we need to start working on getting away from that that hell hole <laughs> and we Were still you... we still have stuff on there today but yeah our website is our core business i mean that's that's where everything pretty much goes through how do you decide what you're going to put on there versus your site or so you just what, double down well what we do is we have um we, we we have listings on etsy we have listings on ebay and we have on our site because ebay will offer incentives to their customers you know they might give them a 10 percent off coupon they might give them ebay bucks you might sign up for a credit card deal whatever you know you might get some kind of gift card for ebay so we and it's where have... a lot of people go to look for stuff like that first you know yeah and if you see our stuff on there you might be like damn i really like this shirt it's expensive and then if you go and search in google and dig a little deeper, you'll see our website and you'll be like, wow, it's cheaper on their website. And mm -hmm. then you use the discount code welcome for 10% off. And you just, you know, got a way better deal than what you got on eBay. But um, we sell on Etsy as well for that same reason, because there's people who, you know, they have gift cards on Etsy from friends for whatever, or, you know, whatever reason you want to shop on those platforms, you know, or how it gets, you know, you get the shirt in front of you on your screen. It's just, if that's where it is, you know, sometimes people can't resist and they buy it immediately without looking so have you always been based in kansas city uh yeah so wyco w-y-c-o is stands for wyandotte county that's kansas, city, kansas. <laughs> yes yes so that's on the the kansas side and that's where i was born and raised at and then um when we opened our retail store in kansas city missouri um i mean obviously we kept the name the same because and people always are like well, you're in Kansas City, Missouri now. Why is it Wyco? And we're like, well, you know, there's like Nebraska Furniture Mart in Kansas, you know, <laughs> like go talk to them, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, so we, we reestablished over here. We moved over here to be near the retail store. And, uh, you know, when you guys came through, like back in the day, it wasn't necessarily like that. It was kind of split into two locations, but it makes it more difficult to kind of show you 
the vintage stuff as well as the shoes and the streetwear and the stuff that's down in the in the retail store yeah i totally didn't expect that room upstairs like when josh told me we're like coming to look at t-shirts i was like awesome and then we like got there and like i'm looking around and like i see like a, a streetwear store you know and i was just looking at like and to me i was like oh it's a small selection of shirts and i had no idea we were going to be taken into this like other secret room but you know, there's still cool shirts there, but I was like, oh, they're like all like double XL. I won't fit into any of these. And like, they're all in plastic. Like there's there, it looks very like exclusive and cool. But like, I was like, oh, they might not have like what I was like imagining. And then we go upstairs to this secret room. And like, it was just like, first of all, like everyone loves an exclusive room. Like you always want to know there's like, <laughs> as like a shopper, you know, like to be taken into like another room, like it's just so exciting. <laughs> and I was blown away by your inventory and how organized it is. Like if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see um, behind Adam and Patrick, they have everything super organized and we can get into your organization as well. Um, but so did you originally just have the downstairs, like is the downstairs like a like I'm sure it's also part streetwear, but like, is it like a front for like the secret room? Like, what's with the secret room? What's with the separation? Like, we we were an <laughs> online business for well over a decade before we ever had any you know any any thoughts about opening a store. And and so when we opened the store and we started selling streetwear, you know that that attracted a different audience and that was really cool. But what it gave us was this flag where you know, here is, you know, a space that you can walk into, you get a sense of like what the brand is about, what you, you can expect when you're shopping here by looking at it. And in the past, it had always been like a warehouse space or a studio gallery or an office space. So like to have, you know, people and, and, and celebrities and, you know, sports players and musicians and whoever come, like, it's kind of weird. Like, it's kind of like, hey, come check out my weird warehouse storage room. Um, and so now you walk into the store and you see this, like, kind of luxury experience. So when I say, hey, do you want to go see the good shit? You trust that I'm not going to, like, take you to a, like, <laughs> warehouse room, you know, where... There was a level of excitement where I was like, where are we going? Like when I was like, what's the, no, but how do you guys decide who gets to go upstairs and who doesn't? I mean, <laughs> to be honest, I, if the person doesn't seem like a complete psycho and I, and, and I trust them, like, I don't, I don't generally have any problem taking anyone up here, you know, as long as I feel safe. I mean, like we don't, bring random you know weirdos up here a lot and we don't advertise the address um and i feel like if you're in a vintage t-shirts it's just complete like you're gonna be like hey you know i want to see some stuff and we you know we do have a lot of people come in that want to see vintage stuff and we'll bring them up here um obviously not as much since you know everything mm -hmm. but um you know we will we'll bring up people because it's like they're when they come into our store they're like where's the vintage stuff at you know and yeah. we're like okay what, what do you want to talk about because some people will be like i want to see this one shirt and we'll just run upstairs real quick and just bring mm -hmm. it right down to them because we can just you know do it like that, yeah, a lot, that fast. a lot of times people will send us a list in advance of, of what they want to see and we can have a stack of 10 shirts ready for them to go through and they don't necessarily have to come up here and 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 do it all but this is fun for someone that wants to explore so fun yeah is do when people walk in the room do they, does everyone freak out is everyone I mean, like what people, <laughs> people freak out i think like kind of start to finish um when when you all were here had we done the wall was were all the dis displays up on the wall i think in the did. living room I think so. do you remember um yeah there there i yeah, remember so, like I mean, some there's, there's, there's pictures all over the wall. the wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's yeah. there's probably about 50 vintage, you know, uh, record store promos and posters mm -hmm. and, and, you know, vintage display pieces. Um, just so as soon as you walk in the door, it's it's music history, every corner um, of, of the loft and, and the workspace. Yeah, if you don't like music, you'll hate it up here. <laughs> right? Yeah. You, I thought it was interesting how you said you guys 
Okay, so when you're talking about like the variety of ways that you guys find shirts and you mentioned security guards even, like how are you getting in touch? Is this like a, like how are you, or, like do people find you? Do you find them? Like how do you like get in touch with these people? In, in When you buy like the bulks of shirts and stuff. I mean, really, it really got good, I think in 2016, uh, where we had a run of press where we were in the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, GQ, NPR, all within like a six month period. So all of a sudden it's, hey, I was a roadie in the 80s. Hey, I was a merch manager in the 90s. Hey, I got like, you know, people really uh, found out, I think. And, and now that they see what we do and they know that we offer like very reasonable prices uh, mm -hmm. for collections small and large uh, that can be submitted at Wyco Vintage at wycovintage.com. Um, you know, it's a place they can go get good value on something like that. What sparked that excitement like within that six month period? Um, you know, I think celebrities. Yeah, celebrities and okay. stuff and it just like, you know, it hit at the right time. I mean, we've been doing this a long time now, so we kind of have seen a lot of trends and kind of waves with it and stuff. And some people like to pretend that like like vintage shirts were just like some kind of flash in the pan thing of fashion, but it's like it's an everlasting thing. Mm -hmm. The stuff is something people hold on to. It, it like has meaning. And if it doesn't have meaning, well, you're in for it for the fashion, which that's fine too. But I mean, there's a lot of different reasons why people like the shirts they like and, and what they go after, you know, whether it's something from when they were a kid, whether it's their dad's favorite band. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. just like there's so many weird reasons why somebody might want a shirt, why they like a shirt. But but like people wear shirts and people like shirts. So we and, got a lot and, of them. <laughs> and every single day, every single day, there is a child somewhere that is hearing Guns N' Roses for the first time and it's changing his life forever. Like for real, like every day. And that's what they're going to go looking for. Is you like, get a relic that was there at, you know, an appetite for destruction concert tour date, you know, I mean, and that's, there's like some kind of spirit, you know, if, within the shirts as well, you know, that were especially tour shirts and, and crew shirts, you know, that were, you know, worn by the people who are right there. We have a, a Led Zeppelin crew tour jacket over here. That was the guy that did the, the monitors. He was a monitor engineer for uh, Bonham. Um, and this thing is, I'm going to grab it real quick. Just show yeah. It. John Bonham was the drummer for, Led Zeppelin for those. But this know. here is that's sick. I don't know how good. And it's great quality. It's it's pretty good. It's got some wear marks on the arm. Um, this guy here, I believe this guy was the promoter for the tour. This this large fellow. Oh, that's here. so funny. But yeah, I mean, so this jacket, the guy who wore this, he probably wore this while sitting right next to John Bonham, you know. And this is the last Led Zeppelin tour. So I mean, like. This is magical right here, you know? I mean, what, yeah. how do you even put a price on something like that? It's really hard to. When you get stuff in, do you like clean it ever? Or is that like a big no? Like how do you guys preserve and store everything? It depends on the piece and what the problem is. I mean, generally when we're shopping and, and looking around, we're looking for things that are clean, don't have holes. You know, you're hoping what you get doesn't stink when you get it. But I mean, mm -hmm. you know, things air out and things dry clean and things go in the washer. And, and we do, okay, we started, we did before even COVID, we started a thing because we were doing this anyway. And we realized we were doing it like back in the day, we weren't necessarily always doing it if a shirt smelled like it was clean, I guess. But I would say in the last probably year and a half, every shirt that we've listed on our site ha was, has been washed and laundered right before uh, we photo it and then put it up and into our inventory. So anything you buy from us, you get it out of the bag ready to wear, which is really cool because sometimes you'll buy <laughs> a shirt online from somebody and you know, it's got half of their cat's hair on it or yeah. it's or, or like even, cigarettes, mothballs. I mean like all kinds of or stuff. Even, even a new shirt that has the tags on it, say a 90s shirt, it could be dry rotted. And if it's never been washed, that shirt will fall apart as soon as you start to like handle it just because it's, you know, the dye's never been flushed out of the cotton. The shirt's wow. basically just like disintegrating because it's just- So it looks shirt. like brand new, but it's trash. And what's your care uh, instructions for like shirts at home that you get from you guys? We, so what we do is we always wash on cold. If it's a tie-dye shirt, you know, I, I 
normally just do it in a small bucket, like real quick with some detergent, rinse it, let it, let it hang dry. Don't ever put your, put your shirts in the dryer when they're uh, still wet. Always let them air dry. Um, I mean, obviously if you need to fluff it a little bit with the wrinkles and stuff, you know, that's okay. But you know, if you put a hundred percent cotton shirt into the dryer, it's going to shrink. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's a 50, 50 shirt, it's probably already shrunk enough. Or it probably won't shrink anymore. It's kind of the cool thing with some of the seventies and eighties stuff. It's been washed <laughs> enough and put in the dryer that it's probably not going to shrink as bad. It's but permanent size. But we uh, we definitely always recommend to you know wash on on cold and and air dry. If you're dealing with whites, um, you know OxyClean is really good. Um, doing cold soaks, light soak on the side with shirts, a white shirt um, that helps with like the yellowing in the armpits. Um, you know, if you're feeling risky, you know, we, we use bleach and, you know, we'll bleach white shirts if we feel like it will, it'll be effective. Um, so there's, I use hollow bleach. Yeah. It's, it's really, really? just depends on what it is. Like that jacket, for example, it yeah. smelled kind of old just from sitting for a long yeah. time. And so we've been letting it air dry out, just hanging out, mm-hmm. you know, here and, and just let, if it's a nice cool day outside with some breeze, I'll set it outside and let it kind of do that. And we just flipped it inside out recently. So the inside, you know, it's just to let it air out a bit. Cause some of these things have been sitting in closets for years. And so, you know, they got that smell and some people like that smell. So, you know. Yeah. Some of my stuff, have like sweat stains and or like they'll get like oil stains like if i'm like cooking or like an olive oil like lands on my shirt and i'm like no Make and then it just like will. it'll really it. yeah it's because it's oil it's got oil in it and yeah I just ranch on everything and <laughs> like that's one thing where i'm just like anytime it happens i'm immediately just like it, it's really that. depressing it's really depressing yeah i ruined like this really cool vintage police shirt that my mom gave me and it has like several oil stains so what do i do to get it out what color that, is it it's black it's black you could do yeah. oxy so like take take a scoop of oxy put like five gallons of just room temperature water throw it in for what five hours four hours and okay. see how it goes, see how yeah, it goes you know? do you have to rub it like no off? you might okay. like i mean once you take it out you'll give it a squeeze just to get the the excess out but i mean just soak it no know? see if it lifts it i mean like heat will obviously help lift oil um it might you know but it'll take the color out of the black it might, shirt it might hurt the color a little bit but that's yeah I mean, like, it's, it's kind of faded though so that's probably okay yeah then, probably okay like on a newer black shirt when you go with hot water it will it will take away some of the the ink and or the dye in mm-hmm. the shirt itself it won't hurt the graphic hot water really doesn't hurt a graphic unless it's like a water-based ink um you know sometimes those will bleed so you you know you do have to be somewhat careful when you're dealing with hot water and vintage shirts um but yeah it's, it's the best yeah. podcast about laundry ever yeah i do i do way more laundry than i ever thought i would do in my life i mean it's really i'm, I'm trying to get a sponsorship with tide or you, you should or oxyclean. Oxy. That'd be cool. I want to. Yeah, I think I feel like you got to be a cool like store because I feel like brands try to do make their stuff like cool now. So I feel like you guys would be such a cool commercial. Yeah, we need to have this YouTube video. With like a of story. Yeah. We've already talked about this. So <laughs> this, is, this is just gonna help springboard it. We're gonna talk about. Hell like, yeah! I'll tag them. I love it. Um, so. Yeah, isn't it like crazy when you go to like someone's place and they're like, oh, I have some vintage shirts. And then you just see like a giant stash. Have you had one of those experiences? Like I did a podcast at this woman's house. Like it was her son and her like have like a sex podcast. Pretty crazy and odd. Um, Nice people though. And and behind them was like a giant quilt of all these vintage shirts. I hate that they were cut up. I know. And then I was like, oh, like, where'd you get all those from? You know, it was interesting. She's like, oh, those are all my shirts. I like made that quilt. It like hurt a little inside yeah. because I want to have a bunch of cool shirts. But she was like, oh yeah, I have like tons of like stocks of them. And like, she just had like drawers full of like tons of shirts and that she's just like, and it's like, you're not even doing, I mean, yes, you did something with them. Like you hung it on. <laughs> you did something very bad. Up. Yeah. But she also That's had like just. You did a no, no. Yeah, but people have just like drawers full of like yeah. of shirts and they're just sitting there. Like my uncle, he um he used to be in a band, the Bullock Brothers. I don't know if you guys know who they are, but like I don't know if anyone knows who they are, but don't know the he has he's like a huge music fan and has 
so many fucking cool shirts and like he gave me some but then he took them away like an asshole but i'm like i know you're not doing any i'm angry now i was like i know i know you're not like wearing these like why can't i have them like i hate like i feel like parents hide them from their kids or like People like get them and they don't want to give them to you. And you're like, I would wear this every day. Like, can I have this? I mean, I there's shirts from my childhood that I would that like could never ever wear ever again because they're just so messed up. But I could never part with them for any reason because I mean that's doesn't that's, it like anger you though sometimes when you're like, can I just have that? Like, I mean, th there's like definitely times when you want to buy something and maybe somebody wants a lot more than it's worth. Yeah, that's, it'll, that's a very close feeling off. to that, definitely. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, I, I definitely, like, understand the sentimentality, so I, I, I don't get mad at people. Like no, I have – well, we'll have people that will, like – I mean, a good example of something similar to this is people, like – send pictures of their vintage shirts to us just to show them to us not to sell them or anything and it's like okay they're just really proud they're yeah. really proud of them they like them but you know like we we had an instance uh in in march or april um where a gentleman hit us up to sell you know he probably had a dozen shirts or so i mean but you know he'd lost his job because of covid and and he didn't know you know how he was gonna eat like straight up so he brought in these shirts and i mean like it was a really fucking emotional deal for him and like mm. i i have a couple pieces that i told him i was like hey like i'll hold on to these for you and then you know when you get get your shit <laughs> back together like I, you can just you know give me, give me back shop. yeah totally but you know a little little more benevolent i think but you know it, people do get attached to them so i i definitely like would never fault someone for for holding on no it's kind of it's, and it's kind of also like it like the ticket stubs too you know we all keep ticket stubs at concerts we oh. go to and I, was like, what the fuck are we <laughs> I forgot but, about that when like, they used to have ticket stubs yeah well yeah that's so, it. Hang it on your mirror. some people <laughs> will cool. send like we'll buy shirts from them and they'll send the ticket stubs with them just like you monster i'm like you're just done with all <laughs> of it yeah. i mean i get it but i don't i'm really like i'm kind of a hoarder i'm pretty sentimental obviously i mean it kind of makes sense but um you know, I, I could never just like give up my tickets. To, like that's, you know, you might need to just bury those with my tickets. Yeah, so well, I would phone. never. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, you still have tickets. a lot of tickets. The ones that people like give me, I wouldn't. I, wouldn't I know that's all I feel like. We got some Wait, really good ones. You huh. still have your ticket stubs? From oh, I got now? a bunch. I got a ton. And I wow. even keep like the even the printouts. Like I've got like uh, I've got a book that's like with the ticket stubs that was filled up long ago. Um, I, I mean, I. I went I to, to I was that. a musician myself. I went to a lot of concerts. Patrick and I know each other because I worked at a venue that Patrick's cousin owns. Um, so we definitely had access to a lot, a lot, a lot of live music cool. throughout the years. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite um, performers? And I say performers because I feel like, you know, some people like really put on a fucking show. What's the best song on your playlist right now? Um, I, I meant in concert though. When you it, yeah, people you, yeah concerts. Um, so like I don't know. I mean, there's like different reasons. I hate saying some of the ones I like. <laughs> no, I mean, you're I saying. Can, I, so I know, like I I was I used to really like Muse a lot before they got like completely just pussified. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't even know what to say, but they're gonna watch this. I, I hope they watch gonna, this. I hope they see this. Um. You. But, you know, like, I I went and saw their 10th anniversary show at Reading, and the Strokes did their 10th anniversary of, uh, of uh, I, can't, I can't even remember what it was. Um, but both nights were incredible watching, you know, front-to-back albums we played. And, uh, and so, like, those were two really cool shows um, that, you know, but ELO at the Hollywood Bowl a couple years ago was great. We've gotten to see Guns N' Roses a ton. I cry, uh, I cry every time Slash plays <laughs> November Aww. 8th, so, uh, man. That's heavy. It's, it's I, heavy. I cry every time I see the Smashing Pumpkins. Like, uh, that was my first concert in fourth grade. I, oh, uh, that's awesome. We, we went and saw Iron Maiden, and I was, like, just blown away that these dudes in their 60s are just, like, they could, they could run faster than I can, like, <laughs> and they have guitars on, and they're playing music, like, like it's insane. I went to Marilyn Manson's birthday a couple years ago, and it was like a, at a it was like a small party at a house, and Johnny Depp, 
don't really care about him as a musician, but it's still cool to see him part of it, you know? It was totally. Johnny Depp, Marilyn Manson, Billy Corgan, and Courtney Love were all performing. Just, it was like for their friends. Yeah. And they wow. did like this little, and it just like, it was so fucking nostalgic and just like, it was just like such a crazy moment. Just that's a lot. Yeah, all that's and, like, surreal. Small. I would have yeah. struggled with that. Forget yeah. Johnny Depp, but like just to see, like Billy, like I used yeah. to sign my name on all of my homework, Chelsea SP with like a heart and you know. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. Yeah. yeah, we saw we saw them on the last tour of the Pumpkins. And I then... saw them the two nights that they came here. I I have I I have a very weird. I won't tell my weird Billy Corgan yeah. story, but like, but you will. <laughs> that, no, I, I I have a signed single from the first single that he That's took cool. home with him because we didn't have a sharpie at the time, and he like brought it back, which is like so fucking insane. Wow, like, took it and brought it back. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not really into autographs, but that band is just like, that's... Yeah, I love one, it. One of those special ones for me. How Old do you guys... Class? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Go ahead. No, how do you guys... I'm kind of switching subjects, unless you had something else you wanted to say, because I interrupted. No, I mean, we could talk about concerts forever, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Peaches in concert? Peaches? No, I have not. She is a really good performer. Some yeah. people like, are just better, like better. I, I know who it is because yeah. I, I had knew a person who had a, a problem with one of those songs. Oh really? Stop fucking playing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I think we know what it is. Um, but yeah, I think it was a Texas Toms, uh, and somebody yeah. kept playing it, dude. It was the most weird thing. Anyway. Um. So I know that like we briefly touched on this and like i know that like so many people have been wearing like vintage shirts for a long time and then came along celebrities wearing them and uh, like i'm not sure if there was like a number of peaks throughout the past years but i feel like quite recently there is like so many paparazzi photos of like like celebrities like in the airports wearing vintage shirts and like i'm sure that's like very good for business you know but also, like, how fucking annoying is it? Like, are you more like it's annoying, or are you like fuck it, whatever's good for you? Well, business? so, so like, here's the thing. With you know that, what I mean? There's, <laughs> there's two sides to it. It's great for business. Awesome. For I business. love it. I love it but, every time, no matter but, what. You know, you start reading the comments on stories, and you know, like the one thing is like you'll see like you know metal injection put up a story with a kardashian wearing a metallica shirt and people in the comments are like oh my god i bet she's never heard metallica in her life it's like are you fucking dumb that's like the one of the biggest bands ever of course she's heard metallica yeah. and if she hasn't well I, fuck, you know, gate, fuck gatekeepers but, like, know, yeah fuck gatekeepers like we're all like we're all autonomous individuals we all have a right to like like what we like and you don't know what i like and you know, i don't know what you like and i don't you know if you or why that, you like it or why you yeah, like it or why like you a... want to be that judgy of someone else like get a life go find something to but do. people do they get like they get in their feelings about it sometimes but really at the end of the day it's just like you know like i was talking about grateful dead earlier and all their fan made t-shirts and it's like like you could hate the grateful dead but their fucking t-shirts are amazing. Like there's just so many cool different designs people have done over the years, whether you're saving the rainforest, whether you're a fan of Ohio state football, you know, whether you drive a soccer fan, a baseball BMW. Fan, hockey fan. Yeah. There's like, like all these different versions of grateful dead shirts. So it's like, somebody could just be like, damn, this is cool. And I mean, you know, there, there obviously are a ton of grateful dead fans, but it's just like, you know, we've gotten to a point now where it's like, you know, the, it's it's like weird you know people like adam said the gatekeeping, of gatekeeping. It. it just it's like just it's just stupid. it's Why? just a trivial thing but at the end of the yeah. day it's like if, if somebody likes something they like it fuck it if they if they can buy it and they want it then i mean you know as long as it's not hurting nobody <laughs> yeah yeah i like that answer i feel like i like equate it to like a hot girl singing a rap song like every single lyric to a song and it's like I feel like it's the same person who would get mad about like a chick wearing like, but to be honest, like, could I name a poison shirt right now? Like, I'm so hypocritical. Like, I, like I bought this shirt and I like Googled and I was like, okay, no, I know those songs, but like, do I remember them off the top of my head? Absolutely well, you're not, not listening to poison every day. Like, come on, you know? Like, yeah. I, I, I it's freaking awesome. But <laughs> I got a Dennis Rodman Jersey when I was like 10 years old and I, and I'm so happy that I still have it 
from Miguel's. Awesome. I don't know if they have that sports store where you guys are, but I wear it like all the time. And people are like, do you know what position he plays? And wow. like, yeah. And I, and yeah. I did. And like, when I first started wearing it, like I had to look it up <laughs> because like I, I watched basketball games growing up when I was a kid with like my dad and my brother, but like, I wasn't like so much of a fan that I would remember, but I bought the shirt because I remember seeing him on TV and being like, wow, like Dennis Rodman just inspires me so much because I just think he's like so cool and like does his own fucking thing. And like, as a kid, like I want to look up to people like that who like, I'll be like, oh, they're a weirdo. Like I'm, I'm it's okay for me to be a weirdo. So like- right. Absolutely, me, no, like, and that's a, that's a perfect example of that. I mean, yeah, but... and that's like what I'm sure it feels like for a lot of people, you know, when they, have like a favorite band in mind and find like a shirt and like every time they put it on they're like they have like so many people have like emotional connections to like the stuff they wear and like and it goes so deep like i like literally have the chills right now but it's like do you know what i mean like to me like when i put that shirt on and i look in the mirror i'm like oh i'm like someone who's doing like my thing and like that might sound stupid but like i'm sure people like like do people like cry when they go through your inventory ever um, like sometimes. I'm, I mean, like, yeah. I don't know. I've seen people I've, at some I've, I've held, I mean, like, I've held shirts and cried, like, yeah. I've, I mean, for real. Yeah, we've got, know. we've got a couple shirts that were, uh, that were on the Leonard Skinner plane crash, uh, and that belonged to Donnie Kretschmar, who was one of the survivors. Um, and, uh, and he, uh, he had some stuff that was recovered from the wreckage and there were some shirts and, and some of the luggage and we have those. And, uh, there's definitely been some pretty emotional reactions to, to some people when they see those, wow. you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty tragic time of rock history and just kind of a reminder of, of, you know, of that, that time. And, you know, it was so, so fleeting. I mean, that, that was just, you know, I, I, I can get myself pretty worked up easily over, <laughs> over anything. The Woodstock stuff is really cool. And when you really like hold it patrick was gonna wear the hat you didn't wear the hat i forgot to put the hat on but hat when you hold, when you hold when you hold you know a piece from woodstock which is like the most iconic festival of all time like like how can you not like you know we know that two-thirds of the crowd left by the time hendrix played the stars they Bengals fucking banner, were there they weren't even there still, when they were there but he still <laughs> did it man and, it, and it's still like it's just such a pinnacle moment in music that you know they tried to recreate it like it was that cool and they did that's a cool hat <laughs> so the hat all right so this hat is um this hat was what was given to the security force at Woodstock. They were given a pith helmet. I believe it was two pairs of jeans, two t-shirts, a windbreaker jacket, a flashlight, and I can't remember what the other thing was. Um, but that's what, that's what they were, they were given when they signed up to do security. So we bought this hat. We also have uh, the windbreaker jacket and a t-shirt that came with it. They, they were all part um, from the original owner. Uh, the person we bought it from, it was their father's and he was an off duty NYPD officer and uh, he was hired to go do security at the show. And so these were the pieces that, um, that he kept. Uh, he had given the other pieces away, but like you cannot find any, like you can find the Woodstock shirt by itself, the jacket by itself, but this is the only time I've ever come across an actual collection with multiple pieces from it because most of it had been given up because, you know, I mean, people probably gave it to their friends, got lost, they got lost. I mean, you know, whatever. Um, but uh, this is a pretty cool, pretty cool piece. Yeah. You know? was, How much does it go for? Are you um, so like if we were to sell it we have to sell it all together we don't want to separate these pieces because um it's really hard to find something like that with all three pieces together um and we'd probably need to get fifteen thousand for for all three i mean to be honest the jacket is in such great shape it could probably get ten thousand by itself but uh and we could probably we could probably piece it out and totally make more money but they need to stay together. I mean, they just, they do. And so, you know, that's, and that's something that we do have some kind of like spiritual integrity with some of these yeah. pieces where they do kind of like the person I bought those Leonard Skinner shirts from, I, pro I made a promise I would never sell them. Um, 
you know, I might donate them at some point for, for something, but um, I'm never going to to put those up for sale because I told this lady a long time ago I wouldn't. Um, and, you know, it's... So why just, would you? Uh, well, and, yeah, I mean, they kind of belong together. And I've got an art box, you know, stuff that we pulled out when you guys were here. Some of those shirts that we pulled out were from uh, certain printers in San Francisco that, you know, did a lot of the shirts at the time. And, and I've got this collection of about 15 shirts from uh, Hippo Tees is who it was. Um, you know, that I'm not going to sell those. I want to, I want to keep those together, um, at least for as long as I, I can, uh, or I have the say to, but, um, you know, there's stuff like that, that, you know, we do have our personal collection and stuff. And so, you know, we, uh, we try to, we try to keep the, the important stuff together, you know? Yeah. It must be so hard for something cool to come in and not want to keep it for yourself. Like, how do you resist? Like, What's the percentage of cool shit you keep for you? I mean, like, I don't understand how it's possible to even have a business when you see so much cool shit. Like, I just want to keep it all. I, that. I mean, yeah, like, <laughs> the, cool, the cool thing about the shirts are, though, is just, like, anything fashionable. It's, like, if you wear, like, most people wear a, a shirt, you know, X amount of times, and then it just, like, kind of moves towards the back of the closet, right? And then it becomes kind of worth nothing to you. So, I mean, when it comes to shirts, like there's certain shirts that I'll fluctuate through, you know, that I want to wear them because I like them, but not because I want to keep them forever or something, you know? Um, but the other thing too is, is, and this is kind of easy to say on our end is like, if it's like a white t-shirt, I don't want to keep wearing it all the time and end up like getting stains on it or something, you know, cause it's, I always feel kind of nervous when I wear a really, uh, nice shirt that's white you know because if i stain every white shirt i have see i mean so i don't you know. know how some people don't i mostly wear black t-shirts for that reason and it's it's a I good reason i'm always sweating, I'm always sweating. It's, a, it's a good reason though it <laughs> is it's a good reason to wear black t-shirts because they're they're easier to 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 keep looking good long but um no i mean we fluctuate through stuff after so many times wearing it and obviously with us having you know like 4500 different shirts it's pretty easy to find new shirts to wear all the time so. wow yeah so how do you guys organize your stuff i remember when i was there i you know had all, i was looking also like there's so much to look through in person but i was also simultaneously looking online um and there was that one shirt that I wanted, romantic shirt. And I just like really liked the graphics. I liked the muscle tee um, and I couldn't find it. And I got like obsessed and I was so determined to find it. I just could not let go of it. And then when you guys like told me a couple of months later, you found it and like sent it to me. Like I was just excited to receive that. And like, it's, it's cool. Cause it's like, it's like such a high, you know? And now when I like pull it out of my closet, I'm like, oh, it's like the shirt that almost got away, you know? <laughs> no, there's there's definitely shirts that like you you will see and and it won't fit you or it'll have a hole or or just just something will be off about it so then it'll become like this this never ending like i need a better this, version i just need a version of this shirt that fits me and feels good and and that i like you know because because i've i've definitely gone through like different versions of the same shirt where i've had a shirt and then i get another one that fits me a little bit better so you sell the other one and you keep the one you like more and that's that's the cool thing about it too is that the, the longer you hold on to them uh generally they accrue value yeah and then um, what about organization? Is it everything alphabetical? I see like a bunch of letters behind you guys for those. So of you everything are in, in this room is alphabetical. Um, and then I'll turn the camera real quick. Like you can see over here, um, there's like, so that's over there, like Def Leppard, Led Zeppelin, Springsteen, Michael Jackson, Iron Maiden. So then like, a lot of the bigger artists, the larger stashes will have their own tubs. And then like when it gets into Grateful Dead, like we have a giant tub that is all Grateful Dead shirts. And then we have another tub that is all Grateful Dead tie-dye shirts. And on your website, it talks about the perfect fit. What is the perfect fit? What is that hole? So when I first got into vintage shirts, like I said earlier, being bigger, it's really hard to find shirts that fit right. And um, I didn't realize it, but I would be buying like extra large shirts. So I'm like, yeah, I'm an extra large and I get the shirt and clearly it's not fitting. And, um, 
So the measurements, I mean, on vintage shirts, you, the tag size is, is almost worthless because you don't know if it's shrunk, if it was printed on an irregular shirt, because sometimes the shirt will say a large and it's like a small. Um, and so what we've done is, is we've made it on our website where every single t-shirt has the measurements. For, uh, of, so what you do is you take your favorite fitting t-shirt, lay it out flat, measure it across the front, armpit to armpit, and that's your pit to pit. When you go onto the perfect pit or perfect fit page, uh, you can select your ar your armpit measurement, right? Once you pull that up, it'll it'll go ahead and just give you the listings in our inventory that are going to be you know on that size. The cool thing about that is is on a website with forty five hundred shirts, uh, trying to find something that fit is go is going to take a minute to go through. So we've kind of streamlined that process, and then from there. Uh, if you go onto the search bar on the side, you can actually select the length as well, the collar to mm -hmm. hem length. And that's the same thing with your shirt laying out flat. You just measure from the top of the back of the collar to the very bottom of the shirt. And that's going to give you that measurement. And so, you know, the that'll top give you... of the back of the collar. Yeah. So like, cause like, some people will measure like at this point like, of the right, collar, right, right, yeah. right. Okay. the back of the collar when it's laying out flat, like when your shirt's yeah. laying out, you know, measure it from the highest point yeah, of the collar. The okay. Yeah, so like if, if this shirt here, here's a live age shirt, you had yeah. this part right here at the top. That's I say the back because normally mm -hmm. you would it's best to probably lay it out and measure mm -hmm. the back up. But um, you know, that's the best way to, to figure out how a shirt fits. And uh, you know, by doing that, uh, you know, it, it makes the shopping process a lot easier, less returns, because one of the biggest things people kind of have the problem with before deciding to make their purchase is will this fit me and yeah. what's the return policy and with vintage clothing most of the time there are no returns mm -hmm. we though try to you know kind of make the process a little less painful we'll accept a return in exchange for store credit because mm -hmm. we can find you a shirt you're gonna like that will fit you like we have it in our inventory we can pretty much guarantee that with the, the inventory we have and so I feel like that gives a lot of our, our customers that confidence to go ahead and say, yeah, you know, I'll buy that. And if it doesn't work, I can send it back without, you know, feeling like I'm getting <laughs> railroaded on the deal. You yeah. know? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough thing when somebody says, no, I'm not accepting a return. And you're just like, well, yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> they always do. <laughs> what are some standout, like coolest moments you guys have had, like whether it's, you know, someone that you, or like a fan of wanting to, you know, get a shirt from you guys or, you know, cool, There's cool been, moment. In I the mean, biz. Josh Wolf coming into the store, uh, not only highlight of the business, probably of my life. Um, second to that, um, getting to hang out with Chiefs players has been awesome. Um, we've, we've developed some, some close relationships with some of them. Um, there's a few musicians that we've, you know, got to have interactions with and, and do some, some big sales. Um, our, our experiences with Guns N' Roses, um, yeah, Atlanta I mean, I've records. had like stylist opportunities working with stylists and helping people pick out wardrobes for people. I mean, that's really cool. Um, you know, we, our clientele, we have a pretty pretty amazing list of clientele uh you know and, and i feel like uh you know the opportunities they're all kind of different in how they are you know i mean one of the one something that was really cool for us we were at this uh capsule exhibition in new york it's this uh clothing fair type deal where we were asked to come be in their marketplace you know as a seller and uh uh andy hilfiger comes up to our booth he yeah. sees this psycho derelict uh, Tommy yep. Hilfiger tour jacket that's Pete Townsend. Pete Townsend that was in our, our booth and he goes I made that and like, you know and walks over and, and starts talking to us and it, it, we just had this conversation but it was just so funny you know because like here we are talking to the guy who and that was a line he Andy Hilfiger was responsible for all of the Tommy Hilfiger sponsorship of music you know that that development wing was was andy's yeah and i mean like some of the other people though i mean i've talked to 
I mentioned uh, Hippo Tees earlier um, when I was dealing with those guys and talking to them and hearing their stories about, you know, working with the Eagles, Grateful Dead, and Allman Brothers. These guys were printing shirts in San Francisco back in the early 70s. They were like the first people doing this. And so, uh, you know, they, they came up with some of the first artwork for the Allman Brothers. And, uh, you know, just hearing some of those stories is awesome. Um, I... I got this this gal that I talk to frequently. She has some really cool merch, a lot of Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff, and she was really tight with Stevie Ray Vaughan, and so she has some really cool stuff. But she'll always tell me these stories, you know, and it's like, you know, the so it's it's different in all kinds of you know ways because you know some of some of them are kind of. Uh, you know, kind of highlight type things, but other things are like way more interesting when you start talking and hearing, you know, some of the, the backstories on, you know, whether it be rock and roll, whether it be. Yeah, you, you, know, you meet TV. interesting people on both ends, buying and selling for sure. Yeah. Will you let me know if you come across anything to do with like hacking or computers? I got some I got some Dilbert shirts. I got a cool <laughs> computer, I got a cool computer shirt I just got. You do? Uh, I'm obsessed with hacking. Reference. It's more of a drug reference, but I feel like it's awesome. What it you've got it distributed? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh convergent technologies distributed systems division. I mean, yeah. That's, that's like cool. Sick hacker shit. That's cool. Yeah, do people just tell you like, oh, do you have anything to do with this? I mean, I know you guys we get mostly have a lot day. of music stuff, but like I'm, you have also like a variety of other random. Yeah, I mean, like a guy today sent us a message saying, do you have any wrestling tees? Yeah. Yes, we do. Yeah, we do <laughs> have wrestling tees at YKVintage.com. And you know, not every, like a lot of it's pop culture. Some stuff's just kind of funny and weird. I mean, you know, yeah. stuff like this, this is kind of funny and weird. Yeah, but, that's you know, great. So, somebody will enjoy that. Yeah, you know? totally. Like, it's like with vintage shirts, you just like, there's just so much stuff out there that people are interested in and not knowing what else might exist in that subject matter when they're trying to search for it. Um, you know, like if you have shirts from special events that happen at time in time mm -hmm. people are going to reference those at some point you know yeah yeah whether it's some little small parade in their town or a, a super bowl championship for a yeah or a, a venue a place a, a monument that doesn't exist right you know? <laughs> awesome well thank you guys so much for coming on it was so great thank to you. talk to you yeah and thanks then for having us shout out your website and tell everyone if you're still doing like a code the welcome code and your social and everything we should know you want it all yco yeah. vintage okay so it's ycovintage.com ycovintagebroadway.com if you like sneakers and streetwear and then everywhere else instagram facebook twitter snapchat tiktok yco vintage Pinterest, oh. it's Yco Vintage One because we lost the first password. But oh, cool, awesome! Thank you <laughs> guys everywhere. again. If you search Yco Vintage, you'll find it. Okay, cool. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Appreciate you guys coming on.